Secret Identity. So far, we've done Tormund Giantsbane and Lyanna Mormon. We're doing Jamie Lannister next, but first, we need to relook at the woman who many call Maggie the Frog. She doesn't really have a secret identity, but I'm including it in this series for two reasons. First, I don't think her backstory is very widely known, so she doesn't have a secret identity per se, but her identity is a secret to most fans, especially show only fans. The second reason that we're looking at her today is because in order to understand Jamie Lannister's secret identity, it helps to have an understanding of Maggie the Frog and her descendants. So Maggie the Frog, first off, her name is probably not Maggie. She's a priestess, a witch woman, a woods witch, a magi. The name Maggie probably stems from the word magi. This is important because it's yet another example of words getting lost in translation. In season eight, the big word is going to be sun. Two very important mistranslations of the word sun, hinted at in season seven by the gillyflower. All right, so her name isn't really Maggie, but that's what I'm going to call her in this video. Maggie's husband was a spice trader. He found her whilst trading in the east. My guess is that he found her all the way east in a shy, which, if true, would explain how she learned blood magic, just like Marwyn and Miriam Mazdor. So Maggie gets married to a spicer, and she comes west with him. They had a son. Then that son had a son named Ralph. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He had a son named Rolf and a daughter named Lady Sybil. Then Lady Sybil had children of her own, one of which is Jane Westerling. Jane Westerling is a girl that Rob Stark marries in the books. They drop Jane from the show. In the show, she's replaced with Talisa. I love Talisa because Talisa's backstory involves the concept of escaping the walls around her in Volantis and choosing her own path in life. And for her, that path was one of healing. Pretty cool. But the Jane Westerling character is equally as cool, probably even cooler, because the subplot around her adds depth to Tywin Lannister's red wedding machinations. Tywin and Lady Sybil Spicer, they had conspired together. Lady Sybil found out a way to get Rob to fall for her daughter. Her daughter, Jane, had no idea about this. Jane truly loved Rob, sort of a Romeo and Juliet, kind of. But under Tywin's orders, Lady Sybil was secretly giving Jane moon tea or something similar. She was giving her something so that she would not get with child, basically to prevent Rob Stark from having an heir. This subplot is awesome because it's another nod to parents using and abusing their children in this story, the prime example being Tywin, and there's more to it. So Jane did not know about Tywin and her mother's plotting, and her brother Reynold, he didn't know either. And Reynold was at the twins during the Red Wedding fighting for Rob, or at that time hanging out with Rob. He was right there when Greywin was killed. Reynold had grabbed someone's axe, he cut Greywin loose, then he got shot in the shoulder and the gut with crossbow bolts, and he was last seen throwing himself over the wall into the Green Fork River. His body was never found. So expect him to show up in the Winds of Winter, and listen up, he's got a story to tell. So that's Maggie the Frog's backstory. She's the great-grandmother of Jane Westerling, Queen of the North. But like I said, the real reason that I'm presenting this today is because two days from now, we are doing Jamie's secret identity. And in order to understand that, it does help if you understand a conversation between Lady Sybil Spicer and Jamie in Book 5 at River Run. So let's go over that. Lady Sybil and Tywin plotted together, right? She did that for a reason, to gain favor with her liege lord, Tywin Lannister. But it's more than that. Lord Tywin had promised her worthy marriages for her two daughters, lords or heirs, not younger sons, nor household knights. Lord Tywin had also mentioned a match for Reynold, a bride from Casterly Rock. There aren't too many options for a bride from Casterly Rock. Maybe Kevin Lannister's youngest daughter, Janai, maybe that's what he meant. Maybe Tywin was referring to Marcella. I doubt it. I think that Lady Sybil Spicer assumed that Tywin meant Cersei. Lady Sybil thought that her son would be married to the Dowager Queen. What a dummy. Long story short, this is the important part that we're going to get to in the Jamie video. Jamie ends up offering her a betrothal to his base-born niece, Joy Hill. She's a bastard. All right, keep that on your radar. This will play a part in the Jamie Targaryen analysis two days from now. I'll talk to you then.